We are live for day four of the Dream Partner Blueprint, and today we're talking about feminine communication that inspires his commitment. I am so excited to be talking about this today because masculine and feminine energy is something that we dive really deeply into inside our mentorship program, Aligned Attraction, and the law of polarity, which is masculine and feminine energy, is one of the universal laws that governs how we operate. So it is so important that we know how this works. Just, just because we don't know that the topic or the idea exists, exists does not mean it's not governing how we operate as humans. So today we're talking about this universal law of polarity, specifically the feminine aspect of it and how that impacts how we show up in dating, love, and relationships, and the chances of us having a healthy, thriving, lasting relationship with the kind of man who's emotionally available, who has a vision for his life, he takes the lead, he protects, he has the desire to wanna provide, even if we can provide for ourselves. And this is not necessarily the kind of man that every woman wants, but this is the kind of man that a lot of women want. So we're gonna dive right into that today. Now, what if simply by how you carry yourself and how you communicate, you could inspire the commitment of a man who stops dating other women and who eventually asks you to marry him? That would be epic, wouldn't it? And again, you might have different desires. However, there is an innate longing inside so many of us to be chosen, to be prioritized, to feel like we belong somewhere. This is an innate need as humans. This is not only specific to women. We all wanna feel like we belong. We all wanna feel recognized, adored, acknowledged, prioritized. And we especially wanna feel that way in our romantic relationships. And of course, we want a partner to show up for us and be like, baby, it's you and it's only you. That's, that would be incredible. So that's what's on offer today. We're gonna to be talking about the energetics of masculine and feminine communication and why this is so important in being the most authentic version of ourselves as women in our dating interactions and in our lives. Now, let me just say this from the get. When I'm talking about masculine and feminine communication, I am not at all implying that you have to be some image of femininity, whatever that image is in your mind. In fact, we're gonna wipe the slate clean of all of these narratives and stories about what masculinity is and what femininity is. And my deepest desire is that by the time you leave this broadcast today, you have a completely new idea of what it means to operate in a way that feels deeply authentic and where you feel rested in yourself. When I say rested, it's that feeling like, oh, like I can just be me. Like being me is enough. Being me is enough to be attractive to him. Being me is enough to be in a long-term relationship. Being me is enough to have and create what I desire in this lifetime. So that's what we're out to explore today. So we're going to talk about feminine embodiment and communication principles that inspire a man's commitment. And I'm not just talking about any man. I mean the kind of man who lives by values in his life. He's a man of his word. He's honest. He has a desire to be in a relationship and be in long-term commitment. He wants to show up and he wants to be that support system for us. Now, I'll start by saying this. We can't get a guy to commit. So if you're seeing Instagram ads or other things where it's like how to get the guy to commit, run in the other direction. It is not about trying to get somebody to do something else. It's not about trying to trick them, hack them, none of that, because it does not work. It might work for someone with, you know, if the guy has much lower standards and can be easily manipulated, but 
if you're here, that's not the kind of that's not the kind of guy that you're after. You want a guy with standards, with boundaries, who can clearly stand true in who he is, because that's the kind of guy that women feel safe with. We don't want a guy that we can pull a fast one on. We don't want a guy that we can manipulate. It might stroke our ego, but we will never feel safe to truly open to him. So I'm talking about a guy who is really freaking clear on who he is, and he lives in that clarity. All right, so how do we inspire a man's commitment? Because the, the idea of inspiration is completely consensual. This is a big, big concept here. Again, we're not trying to get somebody to do something. We are instead being so fully us, so fully magnetic, so fully authentic, so fully in acceptance of who we are, that there are people out there that see that and they're like, wow, how does she live her life so authentically? That's inspiring. I want to be around her more. And that's how we become attractive. That is what attraction is. We see something in somebody else that we admire, that we respect, and that is what makes them attractive. It has much less to do with physical appearance, though of course we can be attracted to certain physical features. Attractiveness has to do with the level of integrity and wholeness with which we operate in ourselves. And let me just make that clear for a moment. This doesn't mean that we're perfect. It doesn't mean that we don't get to have fears, doubts, etc. We get to have all of that. We get to have our messy days. We get to ugly cry. We get to do all the things. Attractiveness means that we're willing to own every part of our experience. Like, oh, I'm having a bad day? I'm going to own it. Like, that's just what's real for me. And I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm not going to feel bad for it. I won't project it onto other people. But I will be honest about that's the fact that that's where I am. And when people own themselves like that, when they're like, yo, this is how it is for me right now. I'm having a bad day. Or I'm fucking having a great day. Come celebrate with me. It's attractive. Because we get the sense from that other person that they don't feel like they have to pretend. They're not ashamed of who they are. So attractiveness is much more fundamental and simple than Cosmo Magazine wants you to believe, than the media wants you to believe, than all the Instagram models want you to believe, because it has very little to do with the things we're told it has to do with. So let's talk about masculine and feminine energy 101. Let's just all get on the same page real quick. And let me just say that this is not going to be a deep dive into masculine and feminine energy because that would take a lot of time. This is a very deep body of work. This is what we cover, one of the many things we cover inside our mentorship program. But we're gonna, we're gonna take the first bite today. So masculine and feminine energy. The, the, the universe is made up of many things that polarize each other or uh, being in a dualistic reality. This is how things operate, right? You know, left and right. These are seemingly opposite things, but you need left to have right, up and down, black and white, masculine and feminine. Now, masculine and feminine has much less to do with gender identification or biological sex. While more often than not, we see men embody more masculine energy and women embody more feminine energy, people operate on all different points of the spectrum. So it's not that if you're a man, you're always masculine, or if you're a woman, you're always feminine. We all have both energies inside of us. We all need both energies. There is not one that's more important than the other. We need both. In order for one to exist, we have to have the other. In order for our masculine to be strong and well, we also have to have a strong and well feminine energy. And if you don't like the terms masculine and feminine, you can think of alpha and omega, yin and yang. So there are all these ways to describe this polarity. So masculine energy, when we think of masculine energy, this is really more the energy of being direct, being clear, having a strong sense of leadership, um, being more penetrating, being confident, 
And when we think of feminine energy, we're thinking of being receptive, creative, intuitive, nurturing, loving, flowing. Whereas the masculine energy in all of us is very analytical, organizational, linear, A to B, B to C. The feminine energy within us is very creative. It knows no bounds. It is not A to B. It's like letters don't even exist. We're just floating in space and anything is possible. And anything can happen on any timeline. So you see how these two energies really complement each other. They need each other. When one goes without balance from the other, this is when we become really imbalanced. And we might drift off into aggression, perpetration, violence, and maybe not, you know, severe, but it could be self-criticism, self-judgment. This is when our own masculine energy goes without balance from our own feminine energy. And when our feminine energy goes without balance from our masculine energy, then we drift off into feeling stagnant, helpless, powerless, like a victim. So we really need both masculine and feminine energy. Now, we're going to talk about a couple of things here. First one is state of attention because communication isn't just about speaking. Communication is also about where our state of attention is. If you were talking to me and you had something really important to tell me and you were like, Lee, oh my gosh, I have to tell you what happened today. I just met this guy and I'm on my phone while you're talking to me. Would you feel that my state of attention was completely present and with you? No, you wouldn't. You'd feel like you had to fight with my phone to get my attention. And you wouldn't feel seen or heard. You wouldn't feel appreciated. You'd probably feel pretty frustrated and angry and disregarded. So state of attention, where we're putting our attention is really, really important. There are two places that I want to talk about today about where we can put our attention. And this is the masculine state of attention or the feminine state of attention. And this really matters when we are dating. Our state of attention matters when we're in a relationship. Because what, our, what the man sitting across the table wants from us more than anything is to know that we are paying attention to him, that we are listening when he speaks, that we are receptive to what he's saying. So the first thing is we have a masculine state of attention. And remember I said the masculine energy within us is a little more penetrating. It's a little more focused on the other person. So when we have a masculine state of attention and someone is sharing something with us, our attention and our focus is on them. And they might say something like, oh, you know what? I had a really hard day today. And we might say, tell me about it. What was that like for you? We're not saying, oh, you know what? I also had a hard day and I'm I'm angry and I'm frustrated. Our state of attention is directed out and into the other person. This is why it's kind of penetrating. It pierces us with this deep level of presence. And if you've ever spoken to somebody Say you're on a date with a man. If you've ever been on a date and his, all of his attention is focused on you and he's curious and he's asking questions. Can you recall how good that felt to just be the star of the show? And he's like, wow, tell me about your life. Oh, what about what you do for work? Wow. That sounds really interesting. What was that like for you? And you find that you can just go on and talk because there's somebody that's so deeply interested in what you have to say. That is when we're in a masculine state of attention. Our attention is out and into the other person. And this is really important to exercise when we want the other person to know that we genuinely feel interested in what they have to say. Now, the opposite state of attention is a feminine state of attention. This is when our awareness is turned inward at our direct experience. And this is also so beautiful and so attractive to men. Our feminine state of attention is when we are so aware of what's happening inside of us, what sensations we're experiencing, what emotions we're feeling, what we desire, what we want, what we need, what our boundaries are. 
If you've ever been around a person who was so clear, it's like, oh man, I really want to do this. I want to go on this vacation or I want to call in this dream partner and he's got this, this, and this. When someone's really clear on what they want and what they are really desiring, what they need, hey, you know what? I actually need a sweater right now. I'm a little chilly. Can you please turn the air conditioning down, the, the thermostat? It's like, oh my God, that's so clear. Yeah, I can do that. When someone's so clear on these things because their attention has been turned inward in a feminine state of attention toward their own experience, it's magnetic. And what happens in a dating dynamic when you're also in a feminine state of attention is that the man gets a sense that you really know who you are. You know yourself and you're good with yourself. You're aware of your desires, you're aware of your needs and you're willing to communicate them. You're aware of your boundaries and you're willing to exercise them. And you're aware of your feelings and your emotions. And despite what modern modern uh, dating has you believe, men love our emotions. Ladies, men love our emotions. They really do. What they don't love is when we project our emotions at them and we make something their fault, we blame them, and we don't have the ability to regulate what's happening inside of us and speak it with a level of clarity and maturity. Not attractive to anyone. However, when we are so deeply tuned in to our emotions, hey, you know what? I'm feeling really frustrated right now about what you just said. And honestly, it felt really hurtful to me. And the story I have in my head is that, I, that I'm not important to you. When we come to somebody with honest emotions and we're taking ownership of them, it is so hot to the right men, the right men who are also emotionally mature. So our feminine state of attention when turned inward is magnetic. And it also feels really good for us as women. Now, they're both equally important, masculine state of attention and feminine state of attention. Again, masculine being focused out on the other person. How are you feeling? What do you need? How can I support you? What was that, what was that experience like for you? We wanna know about them. We're not talking about us. Feminine state of attention, Wow, this experience was so incredible for me. I have to tell you about it. I just went to the most incredible restaurant. Oh my gosh, the butternut squash quiche was amazing. It melted in my mouth. I could sit there forever. It was like an orgasm in my mouth. Whoa, if somebody came and said that to you because they're so deeply aware of their own experience, would you be like, what is that restaurant? What is that butternut squash quiche? I want an orgasm in my mouth. Tell me about it right now. That's the feminine state of attention and it's irresistible. So these two things, masculine state of attention, feminine state of attention. Now let's talk about communication and communication that really inspires the commitment of a high quality man who's emotionally mature, who is willing to have the vulnerable conversations, the hard conversations, who can regulate his emotions, who wants commitment, who wants to cherish and adore his partner. This is the kind of man and men that we want in our lives as friends, as colleagues, as partners. So let's just talk about communication. Potent, powerful, and influential communication is not just about the words you say. That is one tiny little baby part of it. It's also about how you feel when you speak. Because I can say to you right now, wow, it's so nice out. The weather is really nice today. It's sunny. I can't wait to go to the pool. It's so beautiful. I love these palm trees. I'm really enjoying this vacation. Do you believe any words that are coming out of my mouth when I say it like that? I'm saying the right words, but you don't feel anything. It's like, I, I sound like a robot. But if I were then to say to you, oh my gosh, it is so sunny out. I have got to work on this tan. I cannot wait to sit by the pool. It looks gorgeous. 
I am loving being on this vacation. This is like the best part of my year so far. Me saying virtually the same words from that place gives a completely different message because I'm feeling it. So communication is about the words. It's about how we feel when we communicate these words. It's about the place the words are coming from. So what is our intention behind this communication? And how do we want to feel? How do we want the other person to feel? And it's also about body language, facial expression, tone and vocal intonation and inflection, gestures, pauses. There is something so powerful about the pause. So much happens in the space in between. We feel things in the space in between. And that's why we just talk, talk, talk. Because it's a little awkward and nerve wracking to sit and feel things in conversation with someone, especially someone we're really into, a man we're really into, pausing. But there's so much that gets communicated in a pause. That's a part of communication too. And It's as much or more about energy and intention than about the actual words that are being spoken. So now let's talk about masculine communication and feminine communication. We all do both. Again, this is not about gender identification or biological sex. We all have masculine energy. We all have feminine energy. I'm going to break down these two different ways of communicating so that you can use these different ways when it feels really right and potent and authentic for you. So masculine communication is more penetrative. It's direct, it's clear, it's concise. How do we get from A to B? This is what we're doing. This is the clear direction we're going. And it typically lets the other person know what you want them to do or what you're going to do or what you want, what's going to happen. This is very, very effective when something needs to get done when we're playing with a more dominant energy, when we're really clear about something we want and we just want to express it, masculine communication is beautiful. So let me give you a really fun, spicy example. Here is masculine communication in play. I want you to run your fingers along my inner thighs. Mm. I mean, if you said that to a guy you were dating, like, could he resist? Absolutely not. You're so clear on what you want. You're telling him what you want him to do. And he's like, oh my God, yes, I will absolutely do that because I want you to be satisfied. I want to please you. Another example is, I want you to ask me on another date. Whoa, if the vibe is flowing between you and him and with this beautiful grounded sense of confidence, you said, I want you to ask me on another date. If he's feeling the same way, how could he resist? That is so crisp. Or here's a non-date related example. Please buy milk when you go to the store. Clear directive. This is what I want you to buy when you're going to the store. Done. So this is masculine communication. It is clear, it's concise, it's directive. It's very indicative of you knowing what you want and what you desire and you expressing it. Now, Feminine communication, on the other hand, makes an invitation or invites the other person into your world. And this is, oh, it's like so sensual. So let me give you the same examples. I gave you the masculine form. Here's the feminine form. I love when you run your fingers along my inner thighs. It feels so good for me. It sends chills up my spine. Can you do that to me right now? You hear the difference between example one and example two. And you know what's so funny? After saying that, like, I want to speak more quietly. There's just like this, oh, this like feminine sensuality that just like washed through me. I'm like, oh, it's so, mm, it's so delicious. So example one was, I want you to run your fingers along my inner thighs. Example two was, I love when you run your fingers along my inner thighs. It sends chills up my spine. Can you do that for me right now? In this example, 
you are so clear on what you want and you're expressing what this is like for you to the man that you're dating. I love it when you blank. Here's the experience it provokes for me. It sends chills up my spine. Will you do that right now? That's an invitation. That is not a clear direction. You're not telling him to do it. You're asking if he will. How could a guy say no to that kind of communication? And what this implies about you is that you are so clear about what you want, about what would feel good for you, and you're not afraid to ask for it. Yet it's still very gentle and inviting. Now, example two. Instead of, I want you to ask me on another date, which is the masculine form of communication, which can also be super hot and useful, the feminine way to communicate that same thing is, I'm really enjoying our dating dynamic. Our conversations light me up and leave me feeling so energized. I'd love for you to ask me out on another date. Same thing being communicated at its core, but you're sharing with him the experience that you have and how much you love it, how much your dynamic energizes you. Could you imagine if somebody said that to you? And then you're making a request for what you want. I would love if you asked me out on another date. There is such an inviting quality to speaking it in exactly this way. And what you're doing here is you're inviting someone into your inner world. You're letting them know what something is like for you. I'm really enjoying our dating dynamic. I feel so energized every time I leave you. I would really love if you asked me out on another date. Now this guy gets a sense for what things are like for you. There's no guessing for him. He doesn't have to guess where you're at, if you like him, if you're into him. So there's a deep level of clarity here, but also a very beautiful, sensual way of expressing. Now this last example, where we said the masculine way of communicating was, please buy milk when you go to the store. The feminine way of communicating that same sentence is, it would be so helpful if you could buy milk when you go to the store. It would really help me out. It would make things a lot easier for me because I'm gonna just be getting off of work and I would really love to just feel spacious and not have to rush to the store on the way home. Can you please do that for me? Again, we are giving someone insight into our inner world. Hey, this would be so helpful if. And I will tell you, men love helping us. They really do. Men love supporting us, they love protecting us, they love providing for us. Now it's not every man, but when a a really solid, decent man knows that he has an opportunity to help anyone, but to help a woman out, and she is gracefully asking for his help. She's not in hyper-independent mode, no, I could do it on my own, I don't need you to help me to the store and get milk after, I got it, I'm good, I don't need you. Which is our posture sometimes because we've been conditioned to be hyper-independent. We've been conditioned to think that we have to do it all on our own. And it's, you probably did at some points in your life and you may still need to. However, when there is a really good man in our life, he wants to help us, ladies, They want to help you. They want to please you. They want to support you. They want to know you're happy. So when men can help us out and when we're like, hey, it would be so helpful, please and thank you. They're like, oh my, absolutely I will get milk for you. What else do you need me to buy? What else can I do for you? I love making you happy. So this is that. So let me just give you a recap of all of this. Today we're talking about feminine embodiment and feminine communication and how when we inhabit this space within us as women, it is very attractive. It's attra- we're attracted to ourselves because it feels good. It feels good to be gentle. It feels good to just take a breath and relax and surrender and let our hair down. It's nice. We should do it a little more. We want this for ourselves. And what I shared with you today was masculine and feminine 
energy, what they are, 101 level, and how we all have both flowing through us. This is not about gender identification or biological sex. We all have masculine and feminine energy. And if you are desiring to attract a man or deepen commitment with a man who is very clear about where he's going in life, he has a vision, he has goals, he has dreams, and he's actively pursuing those goals and dreams, and he's uh, self-aware, he's doing his inner work, and he's willing to have vulnerable, hard conversations. He's willing to sit with his emotions. He's willing to take responsibility for his life. If that's the kind of man that you want, nine times out of 10, that man is attracted to a woman who has the ability and capacity to be in a feminine state. Now hear me clearly. I am not saying you have to be feminine and frilly at all, one, or all the time. This is not about wearing skirts and makeup and earrings. Yes, that can be a part of our feminine expression. Feminine energy is, ugh, it's one of the most powerful energies that exists within men and women, within all of us. Feminine energy is not weak. It is not powerless. It is not blindly submissive. Although I do love playing with submissive energy. It's so fucking hot. I love being in submission. I, I gotta say that. That talk is for another day. However, feminine energy is so powerful. Feminine energy, when we are in our feminine, no matter how you identify, we are in a place of restedness within ourselves. We're good. I'm here, baby. I'm, I'm clear on what I want. I'm going to tell you what I want. I'm going to invite you into my inner world. I'm going to tell you about my feelings. I'm going to tell you about my emotions. I am going to shout my desires from the mountaintops because I am so fucking tuned into them. That's feminine energy. Bam. Wow, I'm turned on just talking about it. I hope you're turned on on the other side of the screen. Definitely give me a heart or a little fire emoji if you're hearing this and you're like, wow, that is powerful. That is an attractive energy. And when we notice that energy in other people, when we're around people and we're like, wow, they're so good with themselves, like they're solid. Of course we want more of that. We don't want somebody we have to babysit or manage. So when we are empowered in our feminine energy, and when we're also empowered in our masculine energy, we are really balanced. This is what being in right relationship with ourselves feels like. It's like, yo, I'm Gucci, I'm good. I'm out here, I'm having a good time. Who wants to join? And as women, when that's our stance and our posture in the world, I'm good. I'm out here wanting to have a good time, I'm dating, I'm loving this experience, I'm learning from each man I'm dating. Of course, men want to be around us because it's like, wow, she doesn't need anything from me, but she's out here having a good time. I want to have a good time. I'm not going to have to emotionally manage her. I'm not going to have to try and shield myself from the projection of her emotions. She's good. That is what we're talking about today. This is the essence of integrated embodiment and feminine embodiment. And this is what, this is one of the many, many, many things that we help you embody inside our mentorship program. And I'll talk about that in a second, but I will just say, as a woman who is living this work for myself, living what I am teaching, if you are on the other side of the screen, no matter how you identify, there is such a sweet space inside of ourselves when we really allow ourselves to relax and rest in our feminine energy. It is priceless. The, the, the place that I'm talking about within you is the place we're all rushing to get to. We're rushing to do all the work so we can relax. We're rushing to make all the money so we can relax. We're rushing to attract the dream partner so we can finally be happy and relax and feel secure. Boo boo, it's not out there in the future. It's right here, right now. We relax. Doesn't matter what the bank account looks like. Doesn't matter what the relationship status is. Doesn't matter what the number on the scale is. Doesn't matter what the job is. Doesn't matter what your relationship with your parents or your exes are like. 
Yes, these are all things, real, real things we have to consider. But there is a place in this now moment where you can say, okay, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm good. That is the essence of feminine surrender. And that in that place, we feel deeply safe. And when we feel deeply safe, we open our hearts. We're not on guard all the time. We don't have the walls up. We have boundaries. We have standards. But we're not trying to fight people off. And for the women that are here with me right now, I know it has felt like you've had to protect yourself your whole life and that you've had to do it all on your own. And what I'm inviting you into is a place inside of yourself where you get to rest and relax. And that place is where you open your heart to yourself. And when you open your heart to yourself, you can naturally open your heart to men that you're dating, men that have earned your trust, of course. And that's, that's what inspires his commitment, an open heart. It's not about all the things you do around the house, how much money you make, how much you put out, blah, 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 blah. Bonus, awesome. It's about your open heart. And everything we just talked about today helps you create that. The place that sits underneath the ability to communicate from a feminine energy is deep safety within, deep awareness of self, deep awareness of one's emotions, needs, desires, boundaries, and the courage to communicate it. And the desire to invite someone into your inner world because you're having such a fucking blast that you're like, yo, you gotta, you gotta come be with me inside here because it's amazing. That's what's here. And this is what we wanna show you inside the mentorship program. Because all women deserve to and should know what this place inside of them is like. This is when we feel whole. This is when, this is when we feel like we're in a deep place of self-love. And that's what we want to teach you. So if you're here and you are a woman and you're, you deeply desire to call in your dream partner, a man who is clear, who has a vision for his life, who wants to protect, who's willing to take responsibility for his life, who has a vision for the relationship he wants and he sees you as a part of that, who desires commitment, long-term commitment. If that is you or you're currently in a dating dynamic with a man that's a little more casual and you want it to be more serious, then DM me with the words aligned attraction. And I will send you the details about our mentorship program. Inside this mentorship program, we teach women all of the fundamental and most vital skills that they need to know about dating, about communicating, about deepening relationship and commitment with someone, about sexuality, about conflict resolution. These are all the things that we need to know about being in relationships that nobody taught us. No one taught us how to do this. No one taught us how to date. No one taught us how to set clear standards for ourselves, most of us anyway. No one taught us how to have conversations about our sexual desires and preferences. No one taught us how to effectively navigate conflict and really come back to being a team instead of pointing the finger at the other person or making ourselves wrong. So where do we learn those skills? That's what we teach you. Because if you want to have a healthy, thriving relationship that feels both very erotically alive and emotionally connected and you have aligned values and you know that you and your partner are going in the same direction through this life, we have to learn these skills. It's a non-negotiable. And if we don't, what we're going to do is we're going to keep playing out the same patterns over and over again attracting the same kinds of men that don't feel like a fit, yet we have no idea why we're doing this, where we end up in situationships that don't ever lead to real commitment, people ghost us, they get flaky, we put a wall up because we have a fear of intimacy, we don't feel safe to open our hearts, we don't know how to communicate what we're feeling, 
If we don't learn these skills, we cannot have healthy, thriving, long-lasting relationships. Non-negotiable. And unfortunately, because we didn't get taught these things as a kid, 99% of us, we have to learn it as an adult. And honestly, it's a gift. I tell you, knowing these things now as an adult, and I had to teach myself most of this and learn from other teachers, the quality of my relationship is far beyond what I could ever imagine. So I want to invite you, if you're a woman watching this, and you want to call in your dream partner, someone that you can do life with, your person, your ride or die, your boo, your bae, then DM me Aligned Attraction, and I will send you the details of our mentorship program. We are closing doors in three days for enrollment. So if this is you, if anything that I said resonated, get in here like swimwear. Yay. The other thing I'll share is that in witnessing the women in the program, they've created phenomenal results. We've had women come into our mentorship program and attract their partners within three weeks, a month and a half, three months. Some of our clients are planning marriages and weddings now. Some of our clients are traveling the world with their partners. All of them are feeling deeply safe to be who they are in dating and in relationships. And that is more important than anything. So if that's what you're out for, then send me that DM. All right, beautiful. So now let me give you today's reflection questions because I want you to take this and try it out. So we talked about masculine and feminine state of attention and communication. So how do I want to feel when I communicate? I really want you to ask yourself this. How do I want to feel? Do I want to feel expressed, elated, clear, happy, serious? How do I want to feel? What do I need to be aware of so I can communicate my message clearly? Are there needs I should be aware of? Are there desires I should be aware of? Are there emotions living inside of me that I should be aware of? If I want to communicate my message clearly and I want as much as possible for this other person to be able to understand and receive what I'm saying. And then what message or feeling would I like the other person to receive? How do I want to leave them feeling? While we don't have control over this, it is a really fun thing to think about because if I know that I want to leave my partner feeling excited and playful, then there's a certain way that I'm going to show up to that interaction. And if I know that I want to feel excited and playful, then I'm going to use different facial expressions. I'm going to use different gestures. My tone is going to be different. So really reflecting on these things. And then what's my overall intention in this communication? Is my intention to let this person know what the plan is? Is my intention to invite them into my inner world and let them know how I'm feeling and then make a request for my needs? Or is it something else? So as you go through your day, I want you to practice both masculine and feminine states of attention. Masculine state of attention being focused out and into the other person. Feminine state of attention being focused in on our experience. And then notice which state of attention feels more natural for you. I've had women inside our mentorship program say that actually masculine state of attention feels more natural. It's so natural for me to focus on the other person and it feels way more challenging to focus on myself. Whereas with some women, it's like, wow, I, I know what I'm feeling all day. I could tell you all of it. So notice which one feels more natural and then practice both communication styles. And if you're just joining, you'll want to watch this replay because I, I give you um, gems on masculine and feminine state of attention and communication. So practice with both communication styles, masculine and feminine. Masculine being clear, directive, concise. Feminine being very connected to our emotions, our desires, our needs, and then inviting the other person into our inner landscape. And then notice which one feels more natural for you and which one feels edgy. And see how people respond differently to each way of communicating. Beautiful. So tomorrow, in the Dream Partner Blueprint, 
I'm going live, same time, same place, 7 p.m. Central, on the one mindset that can help you attract the love of your life ASAP. So if you're just joining, go back and watch the replay. We're just wrapping up. Tomorrow is going to be super potent. If you want to come for the sermon and leave feeling changed, then you have got to be there because I want to break this down so simply for y'all. If you've been here over the course of this series, then you know that my way of teaching these things is to make it as simple as possible. And I'm not trying to load the jargon on you. This work, this understanding, this knowledge, this wisdom is for everyone. So if you want the one mindset shift, just one, that can help you dramatically shift the results in your love life and attract your dream man ASAP, then you have to be there. 7 p.m. Central tomorrow, right here on IG Live. And what I also want you to do is slide into my DMs right now and send me the questions that you have about dating, love, and relationships. Because on day six, tomorrow's day five, on day six of the Dream Partner Blueprint series, I'm going to be live doing q and I'm gonna answer all your questions. So if you want something answered, send me the question and then show up. 7 p.m. Central on day six. I'll repost the schedule. All right, babes, that's it for now. I'm sending you so much love and good vibes.